So welcome to another 4GWE TMC telecast. I'm here with Ehab Tarazi, the VP of uh, Global Network Planning. Thank you, Carl. And, and I, I, had to, I had to think about the word global here. So in terms of um, uh, Verizon right now, you guys are doing some interesting stuff right now with the global mesh. Why don't you talk about what you mean by the global mesh and how global is global while we're at it? Thank you very much, Carl. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me here. Um, global Mesh is our global program, and when we mean global, it means not just U.S. or Canada, Mexico, it means truly global that touches Asia, Europe, Middle East, Africa. The Global Mesh program is a, is a strategic program that we kicked off back in 2004. Okay. And the idea behind it is that we need to improve the performance of the network when we have multiple submarine cable cuts. And a submarine cable is a fiber cable that lays underwater. Many people don't know, but the global communication network consists of hundreds of cables laying under the oceans to connect North America with Europe or Asia, and they are the backbone of all global communication, voice or data. Right, right. So when these cables are cut, it takes weeks to restore it sometimes because you need to send a cable ship out there to fix it. So you need a much more resilient way to restore it. The global mesh allows you to take more than just two routes. You can take many, many paths, and it's intelligent enough to restore it even in the event of multiple cable cuts. The difference between a mesh and what we know as Sonnet is that Sonnet will know two paths, primary and protect, predetermined paths. It, when one is cut, it goes to the next, and you always have to set aside half of your network for backup. Right. If you have more than two, it fails. Okay. While a mesh can take 10 more paths and intelligently use all of them. Okay, now, is this a result of Ethernet and packets? Is there, is, is there a functionality here? I'm, I'm assuming that you're not having 10 whole fibers being the, used for this. I'm assuming that what you've got is um, kind of a, a, a continuance of the ability to see through through the ethernet what's going on is that an accuracy? actually at this stage right. mesh is all about the optics the, okay. what you talked about the 10 fibers that's exactly what it is okay but when you have scale and you have uh, demand for all different services you actually get more efficiency out of that than you have from sonnet so it's because of the wdm functionality yeah. that we're at now that that you've got all yep. this all this glass that you can, can take and make multiple colors on that's correct. got it and more deployment of cables more options in fact, in some places, we deployed new cable systems underwater just to ensure there's enough capacity and diversity because the global demand for bandwidth continues to go up. So, so, okay. so what the mesh does is it's able to see all these at the, at, the, at the fiber level, at the optical level, and when one or two is cut or more, it can, based on predetermined algorithms or even dynamic algorithms, it can restore the traffic. Okay, and, and just... In the ADM world, you, you basically compared your streams and you made a choice on the yep. Sonnet stuff. What's going on with the mesh when you've got multiple streams? Is it the is mesh the uses, uses a new technology called control, control plane technology. And then new technology is able to say for all these, all these circuits, let's say, that you right. have from points A to Z, all of it, it has a view of all of them. It understands the status of the network and it understands the priorities and also what those customers want, because these customers could say they want to minimize latency or they want higher availability or they want to avoid a single path. And it can take all that information in the event of an outage, understand all the options available, and within 300 milliseconds, it can fully restore the network. Okay. And since I'm, I'm talking to, it, this is kind of the whole globe. Yep. Um, you guys own a portion of flag in some some ways is well, is, maybe. is it is it a worldwide experience from end to end like can i go from new york to to uh california via via basically the the trans transatlantic cables yeah actually it's much more than that now okay so to talk a little bit about the global mesh deployment verizon had Back in uh, 2007, we completed seven-way diversity across the Atlantic. Okay. So across the Atlantic Ocean, we had seven diverse ways controlled by this intelligent network. That means you can take four cable cuts and still survive and restore all the customers. Last year, or in 2008, we completed seven-way diversity across the Pacific. Got and it. to do that, we also deployed a brand new cable system underwater to China and Korea and Taiwan directly bypassing Japan to create capacity and diversity. But 
between that and six other cable options, we have seven-way diversity. And uh, the, what we announced today is that we completed the loop across the globe, so we connected Asia, which is Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, back to India and deployed nodes in India, and then through the uh, Indian Ocean, right. Red Sea, Mediterranean, we connected it now to Europe and completed the mesh around the globe. And Great. the next step here is to deploy nodes inside Egypt so we can do hubbing inside the Middle East, which will happen in 2010. Excellent. Great. Ehab, I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Carl. If people want to find out more about this, just out of curiosity, what, webs what website should they go to? Is there a specific spot? Um, actually, uh, probably verizon.com, and we will find the right people who can talk to them about it. Okay. Thank you very Excellent. much. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Carl. Thanks for your time.